Um, I want to take just a, a few minutes to give you an introduction to this overarching program, which we call the Biodiversity Informatics Training Curriculum. Um, this is going to be about three and a half years of pretty continuous activity. So I just want to give you kind of an introduction to the broader um, idea. So essentially we have this field of biodiversity informatics and it's a strange field in that it's very new, okay? And being new, there are no textbooks, there are very few or no specialized degree programs. Um, there are very few training resources. Uh, in fact, a lot of the training resources that exist were created by people in this room. Um, but there's no real kind of set best practices. There's no textbook, there's no guides. Um, and so we end up making, a, making up a lot of this field as we go along, okay? And so that's where the, this project comes from, where we're, we're aiming to, it may not be the final word. In fact, it's certainly not the final word for what we'll do in this field. But the idea is to put out at least the best current ideas. And so uh, it kind of comes out of uh, a long interest in global research and education on my part. Uh, that, that's where, that's the set of sites where I have uh, worked, taught courses, or have students. Um, sorry, Thelina, you're not on there yet. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's kind of my view of the world, this, this belt across the middle of the world. I don't do high latitudes very well. Um, so I always end up in the tropics somewhere in the world. Um, but the idea is, as Alex put it so well, the idea is that very good science can be done here and in Latin America and in Asia. The information is now much, much more available than it was even just at the beginning of my career. Biodiversity information is, is much more available, for example, here in Accra. Uh, it's not necessarily a matter of who can travel to Europe or the United States to get access to that information. So what we need is to make the tools and the ideas available. And that's kind of the, the idea of this course uh, or this program. In fact, the program depends on a bunch of uh, steps forward in technology. Um, I personally have some pretty strong beliefs. One is that in-person teaching is always best. And the other is that a short course like this is not what we really want. In my view, really, really what we should be aiming for is doctoral education, which is to say that's where you get deep, deep transfer of knowledge. So I'm kind of putting up with these short courses. They're frustrating to me because I get to meet a lot of smart young scientists and I'd love to work with a bunch of you for you know, a five-year PhD. It's not always possible. And so I end up doing these short courses. But that's kind of the preface. The technology is wonderful. It opens huge new opportunities. But really in-person teaching is always going to be better. But there's a lot of content that's going to be put out in the air of this room in the next week and a half. There's going to be a lot of expertise, a lot of thinking, a lot of interchange between you all. Okay? And so we're going to try to capture the best of that, um, that interchange digitally. And then very simple technologies like YouTube allow us to share that information globally. It's not as good as in-person teaching, but it's pretty good. Um, now we've explored some other technologies. Um, one that's been quite key is technology for, for subtitling these videos. And essentially what we can do is crowdsource the subtitling. So you know, we've got maybe a third of the participants here are native French speakers. And I have to apologize because 
My language skills are English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And I have essentially zero French. So my apologies. But the idea is that in a relatively short time, not only will we have these videos out and globally available with the voice in English, but also subtitled in English, which can make hearing strange accents, like my central US accent, um, can make understanding that more easy. And once the English subtitles are there, then anybody and everybody can participate in translating those subtitles into whichever language is of interest. So essentially what we can do is we can provide a lot of content globally with very little expense and a fairly small amount of effort. Um, so essentially the idea that was born over the course of about a decade of short classes like this is linking in-person training courses with digital video of everything, publishing the video to YouTube, transcribing the voice to subtitles in English, translating those English subtitles into, we're up to French, Arabic, Chinese, and Spanish. Portuguese should be in there as well. And then we can provide ancillary information like all of the, the digital files that we just transferred to you all and some of the readings. Um, those can be provided via web links. So essentially, that's the idea of this program. Um, a year and a half ago, I had approached the JRS Biodiversity Foundation, which is an independent foundation based in the United States, and it uh, focuses its attention and its funding on biodiversity informatics. And so I approached JRS for funding for this program. And as of June of 2012, they, they funded this program. Um, and that essentially began this, this um, long process of, as you guys remember, we announce a course about six months in advance. We get applications. We go through the applications. Then we have to arrange everybody's travel. We have to arrange for a facility like this hotel. Essentially what we do is we throw a big party in somebody else's country. So we depend very critically on very good hosts. Thank you, Alex. Um, it, literally this program can't work without a, a host who is very involved and very dedicated to making the course happen. But that's how this all started with, with funding from JRS. So you know, the funding is literally bare bones. It's enough to get the experts and the trainees here from different parts of the world or the continent. It's literally half of the salary for a course assistant, who's Thelina at the moment. Some of you met Kate in previous courses. Um, it's literally just half of that, so I'm pulling the funding for that from other sources, but we won't talk about that. Um, and essentially what we're trying to do is cover the entire field of biodiversity informatics. So we, we can imagine some initial things that are, that are very basic and very um, cross-cutting. This course is data capture. We've already done courses on data cleaning, data publishing, ecological niche modeling, other biodiversity data analyses, and then one very experimental course on building institutions. We plan in the future uh, courses on biodiversity inventories, on essentially countrywide diagnostics or diagnoses of biodiversity information, and biodiversity conservation implementation. So we've got maybe half done. We're planning three more courses after this one. Um, but we've still got a lot, of, a lot of work to do. Essentially, we're right here in the overall schedule. We're in Accra. Previous courses in Nairobi and in Cape Town. 
We've got courses coming up in Benin, and then most likely in Cameroon and Ethiopia. So that's kind of, you know, three years of my life, and hopefully I'll, I'll meet up with a bunch of you over and over again in several of these courses. Into the future, um, what I would love is to see this idea extend more broadly to other fields, uh, molecular systematics, taxonomy. Um, we're looking into in-person courses taught directly in additional languages. Again, I can deal with Portuguese and Spanish, can't deal with French unless I get really good really fast, and that probably won't happen. Um, so that's, that's essentially the idea, extending this idea thematically and language-wise beyond the current concept. And in fact, it's very easy if specialists in other fields decide to take on this idea, um, I don't even need to be involved. I would love to see the molecular systematics world take on this challenge and do the same thing. Okay? Um, the other thing that I'm very focused on is going back to that idea of, of graduate education, which is to say these short courses are good, but much better would be degree programs. Individual students from developing countries paired with individual researchers wherever in the world so that there's that long-term transfer of expertise, knowledge, and insight. So that's, that's essentially a challenge of finding funding. And uh, let's just say I'm working on that, but I haven't been successful yet. Um, so essentially there are some resources that are available to you online as a result of this program. Um, a journal that is completely focused on biodiversity informatics, and that's something that a couple colleagues and I have been running since 2004, um, and that is completely open access, and so you can, from any, any web browser, you can access that journal and see all of the, the papers published in this field. Um, we have, as most of you know, a Facebook page. It's about 1,450 people involved now. Uh, so it's become a very nice forum for uh, essentially trading information that's relevant to biodiversity informatics. We have the actual course program page, and that's now becoming fairly rich. So you can imagine um, a whole bunch of graduate level courses like what you'll hear this, this week and a half, but everything we did in Nairobi, everything we did in Cape Town, very soon everything we do here, and it's all organized thematically with links that you click on and it takes you right to the YouTube videos and right to the ancillary um, data sets and, and publications and such. So this is increasingly a very valuable resource if you all of a sudden need to do some analysis that's new to you or clean up some data or publish some data, resources about how to do that are, are available via the curriculum page. Um, and then something that I hadn't anticipated is that the actual YouTube channel um, is also now becoming quite popular with a lot of subscribers and a, a lot of time by people around the world spent uh, watching the videos. So this has been kind of a surprise for me that all of a sudden people were plugging into this program via YouTube and not via the other means that we had, that we had envisioned. So essentially that's an, that's an overview of, of this program. Um, again, it's gonna be about three or four years of work um, putting together a series of these courses putting together uh, different groups. Uh, the success of this program depends really critically on the experts. I think John is now the only person who has repeated as an expert. Um, but 
the idea is we have people who are leaders in the field and are essentially donating their time um, to come and spend a week or two um, teaching these courses. So it depends very critically on them, but also very critically on you all. So uh, with that, that's kind of, again, an overview of the program and a welcome. And I hope that gives you a, a clearer idea of the, the, the bigger puzzle that this course is one piece of. Uh, any questions about the broader program? <laughs>